I got another collection video and it's not movies, but it is movie related. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back. Sorry if my voice goes a little in and out throughout this video. I think I may be getting a little bit of a cold even though it is like 80 degrees in LA today. Super fun. I do have another collection video for you today, like I said at the beginning, and it is not related to my movie collection. It is actually related to movies in general. It's my coffee table, coffee table book collection. <laughs> like many of you know, I do collect DVDs, VHS tapes, Blu-rays. I just, I collect movies in general, like physical copies of movies. And another thing I love to collect is books about filmmaking and more specifically, the coffee table book variety. So I have a fairly large collection. There's one book that I think I might have left at my parents' house in the move. I could not find it for some reason. So that one is left out, but I will place a picture of it here if I can find a picture of it. It is a Harry Potter related book. The first book I'm going to start with is actually one that you have probably seen if you have been hanging around this channel for the last couple months, the first book is, of course, this 1001 Movies You Must Watch Before You Die book. I love this book. It is probably one of my favorite books in this collection, if not my top three. This is basically like a Bible if you love films and filmmaking. If you haven't checked out my series I do on this, it is a very interesting series because I watch a different movie every two weeks. And on Sunday, I just posted one that is probably the coolest movie I think I've ever seen in a while. If you haven't checked out this, their playlist is linked in the eye up there. The second book is similarly related to that. It is the 1001 TV shows you must watch before you die. It is very thick and it has some of the greatest shows in here. And I like the fact that on the cover it has three of my favorite TV shows, three of my top five favorite TV shows of all time. Actually, I don't think I put Friends as one of my top five favorite TV shows in that video I did, but Breaking Bad and I Love Lucy are definitely in my top five, and Friends is one that I can just sit there and watch constantly. So I feel like it's maybe in my top five or ish. It's, it's up there. This book is like a Bible if you love TV, which I do love TV, and look, Arrested Development. Uh, there's so many shows in here, Californication, and it's not just the United States movies either. It's not just from the US, America, it's all over the country, or all over the world, not all over the country. Just like the 1001 movies, it is literally a, just a list of TV shows and movies that you probably should watch, or if you are a fan of movies and TV, you probably have already watched. This one doesn't have a cool checklist like the other one does but there is an index in the back that I have been checking off of, even though there's no check boxes. If you like movies and TV, definitely check out this book or the other one. They're on Amazon. I think they're like $25. They're really cheap. You can probably find them at Barnes & Noble too. They're super cool. In that same vein of movies you need to watch before you die, this one is a super cool book. It has a lot of the movies that are in the 1001 movies book, but this is only 100 movies from the 20th century, I believe. Yeah, just the 20th century. So like all early cinema. Here, I'll just go to the index and plot like Birth of a Nation. That's the first movie because it's one of the oldest movies in here. So it starts in like the early 1900s, maybe, yeah. And it goes all the way to the last one is, I believe, Crouching Tiger. Yeah, the last movie in here is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And this has a lot more information on each movie than the 1001 book does. This one goes on for a couple pages. It has like a poster for it. Like this is like the Deer Hunter. It has like all the information on Deer Hunter, the actual Deer Hunter poster, and then like pictures and like information about the movie. And this is one of the resources I go to if there's a movie that I'm watching in the 1001 book and it doesn't have a whole lot of information. This one is another go-to for me because I like to research movies. Even in just my free time, I just like to research movies. But this is a Tashin book and the next book I will show you is the reason I got this book. Tashin is really great if you like coffee table books. I'm not sponsored by them. I only have two, three books from them actually. I love them, but their books are hella expensive. This one I had to like go find on eBay for cheap. And I think I actually purchased this book twice and I left the second 
version I have of this, which is the exact same thing, it's just in paperback in like a two volume set. I gave that to my parents because my dad, I think, would like some of the movies in there or would probably enjoy looking through them. The descriptions on both of the books were different. The covers were different until you until I got them and opened them up. Like I think I even got them in the same shipment. It was very weird, but this is a great book for information on some of the greatest movies of the past like decade, century. This next book is the reason I have even looked into the Tashin collection. It is a gift from my sisters for Christmas a couple years ago and it is probably my number one favorite gift that anybody has ever given me. It is the Saturday Night Live 50th anniversary. This is the coolest book ever if you like Saturday Night Live, which I love Saturday Night Live, I'm a huge fan of, and I'm a huge fan of behind the scenes kind of stuff. This book has literally everything. It has pictures and it has like I don't even know if you guys can see see this without me covering my face up it has behind the scenes pictures and then it has like all of the cast members up until the 50th anniversary which was a couple years ago I feel like I'm holding this very awkwardly the different bumpers for like everything oh. yeah like this and then a list more bumpers and then this is like a list of all of the cast members, crew members, like specific crew members, pictures and guest stars, guest hosts, musical guests, like everything. It's definitely worth checking out if you can. It is another Tashin book. It is so great, especially if you are into Saturday Night Live. This was actually the book that kind of got me started into really collecting coffee table books. There were some, like the Harry Potter one that I'm going to show you in a little bit, and the one that I couldn't find. I got them and I really enjoyed them because I love behind the scenes books, but having like a physical copy of a coffee table book or any book really is awesome so I can look at pictures and read excerpts from people who were actually on set or know about the specific things. It's just really kind of invaluable to me especially as a filmmaker and someone who is fascinated by movies and television. This is the last Tashin book and it is a huge one like and I don't mean thickness it is pretty thick but it is also very tall and I didn't realize it was going to be this tall when I purchased it. It is all about my favorite Martin Scorsese movie the, and you're probably thinking it's about Goodfellas which I do love Goodfellas, I do love Casino, I do love Mean Streets, like Martin Scorsese is my favorite director. This is about Taxi Driver and look how big this thing is. I don't think I can get it all into frame. No, probably not. But this book is huge. It's, I don't know if I want to show some of the pictures because if you've seen Taxi Driver, it is a very graphic movie. Here's a good picture I just opened up to. It's Harvey Keitel and Robert De Niro. It's pictures like this. There's just like a bunch of pictures. There's an interview with Scorsese. And I believe there's an interview with Jodie Foster. Like here's the back of it, like this really cool picture of Jodie Foster. A ton of pictures, a ton of articles talking about the process of making the film, what everyone went through with it, like so much stuff. I actually haven't even gotten a chance to read through all of it because it's so big and heavy. It's just more fun to look at the pictures and kind of glance through or just skim through all of the images and text that's in here because there's not a whole lot of text, but it's like the text that they do have, like it's pretty small text, so it's kind of hard to read at points. There is like it'll, it'll go by like sections so there's like different things to read like titles about different things different quotes from different characters yeah if you want to check this out i recommend it it is very fairly expensive because it's a tashin book but it if you enjoy scorsese and taxi driver is a very interesting little flip through you might if you have a tashin store near you i know there is one in the grove in la so it might just be in la but if you get a chance to check it out like in a tashin bookstore just flip through it at least because it's really cool to kind of just see the behind the scenes of this intense movie now i have two more and i'm kind of exhausted because those last two books were really big and heavy but the next two books are harry potter related one is kind of the one that got my interest started in collecting coffee table books and that is this one harry potter page to screen this is another pretty heavy book but this one i have read most all the way through but this one has a lot more a lot more text 
than the Taxi Driver book and even more so than the Saturday Night Live book. Basically just a production diary from the production team for Harry Potter. They have like a bunch of different pictures of them on set, different pictures of the set, concept drawings, like Death Eater masks. <laughs> definitely recommend picking up a book like this especially if you're into production design not necessarily like Harry Potter but they have them for Star Wars Star Trek they have production books like this for pretty much any big blockbuster movie recently especially like series where they have a lot of production going into them if you are into production design I highly recommend it because it really shows you how much and what goes into the behind the scenes production of huge movies like that. And the final book is a book that I just recently got for Christmas from my parents and I am so in love with it. I'm trying to be as delicate with it as possible. It just recently came out. It is The Art of Harry Potter. This is very similar to the book that I was just talking about, but this one is not really production photos. It's all concept art. Pages and pages and pages of concept art for the movie literally anything you can think of it's and it like it's got such beautiful pictures like the cover even like it's so beautiful it makes me speechless i guess because before i started going into film i did start doing graphic design which not great at but i do love some good typography this typography is beautiful over top of this amazing artist rendering of the hogwarts castle and the forest and the lake this like even this back concept art of the weasleys leaving hogwarts is beautiful and i will take this slip cover off because even this color green i don't know if it'll show up well on camera I tried like FaceTiming my mom to show it to her and it just looked black to her. But it's this like beautiful emerald green and it's just got such beautiful like design. Like I don't know if that, if you can see, it's probably, probably with the lighting in here is not the right color. It's just so pretty. I just love this font. I don't know what font it is. It's kind of unreadable, but at the same time, it's just pure beauty. Whew, I'm a little exhausted now. Those books are heavy and it was hard for me to see the viewfinder to see if you could see any of that so this video probably is very hard to see for some people i my framing is very off on this i really need to get a new setup i hope you enjoyed this let me know some of your favorite coffee table books like they can be about anything not just filmmaking i used to have some architecture like design books that I would use as coffee table books even though I never really had a coffee table. I started collecting those for a while and those are pretty cool if you are into architecture. Let me know some of your favorite kind of coffee table books or books in general and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you whoever you are. Let me know who you are in the comments down below and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this leave a like and subscribe if you're new because I love talking about filmmaking and filmmaking books and movies and TV with you guys having a big old conversation about the things that we love and I hope you stick around and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!